What's up, everyone? We are live at 5. It's Friday, May 15th, and it feels like summer here in New York. I'm Paul Wontor. I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined, as always, by Kayla Boynihan. Hello! And hey, hey, who's our special guest today, Beth? Oh, we love this guy. Ethan Slater is with us. You know yes. him, Bob, but he's going to be a killer pretty soon. Later. 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 Later, he'll later. be in a staff. It's going to happen oh, later, but it's going to be good. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to talk to him and find out what he's up to, see his awesome facial hair, because that's what we do on this show. We see Broadway stars' facial hair. Uh, but first, today's news. We are looking towards happiness and in the future, and we now have something to look forward to. That's right. So, Some Like It Hot, the musical, has now been announced for Broadway. It was supposed to try out at Chicago's Cadillac Palace Theater, and I like saying the name of that theater because it's so fancy, but it's canceled that Chicago run, and now it will play Broadway in the fall of 2021, which is just around the corner if you wait a year. Um, so this is based on the Billy Wilder movie. That's the, that was the still of um, Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon in the Billy Wilder film of 1959. Of course, it also starred Marilyn Monroe. Yes, and that, that, you remember that. That's a big, that's, that. I mean, that's a big deal. You gotta yeah. remember that. Uh, it will be. What was her character? What was her character's name? Sugar. Sugar. Which is also the name of the other musical version of Some Like That's It Hot. That's right. There's Sugar. another one called Sugar. This is actually called Some Like It Hot. Easy to remember. Um, so this will be directed by Tony winner Casey Nicola, and it will feature a score by the Tony winning duo Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman, who gave Love us them. Hairspray, uh -huh. they gave us Catch Me If You Can, yeah. and it is written by Matthew Lopez, who wrote The Inheritance. We don't have casting, but there won't be facial hair. I'm going to tell you that now. There won't be I have a very important because... question. Is there an exclamation point? Not that I saw in this press release. I don't think there so, is. I there think is. they're very confident. They don't feel like they need one. And you know what else? The fact that they canceled their out of town run also says they're very confident. You know, it's I a mean, great team. It's they a had great team. We don't have they... casting. We don't right. have the full, you know, the full creative team. We don't have all the details, but we have what we know sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. Sounds hot good. even. There's going to be a lot of wig work in this one. Indeed. Yeah, and guys, Greece is the word. It is the word. Um, it's also the name of a show and a movie. And and this is weird news. A lot of people are reacting to this news on social media, actually. Yeah. So the Tony Awards were supposed to happen June 7th on CBS. They're not happening on June 7th. They're going to happen later, as Ethan Slater would say. That's our theme today, yeah. <laughs> uh, but instead of the Tony Award, CBS will be airing Sing Along Greece. So you can watch Greece and sing along. You could also do that at any time just by putting on Greece and putting on the closed captioning. Right. Um, but, you know, so people are going to, I mean, that's what I do. I watch TV with closed captioning. I sing along to Greece every Sunday night. I but, mean, they, um, had to, they had to program something for that slot. Yeah. And so this is what they're doing. Yeah, totally. It's so it's still Broadway musical theater ish themed. Kind of ponies, but you know, you know, it's entertainment. It's entertainment. It's entertainment. Yep. And continuing our later theme, we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer to see the next phase of a Strange Loops journey. That's right. So we just talked to Michael R. Jackson earlier this week, the Pulitzer newly minted Pulitzer Prize winner for A Strange Loop. That show was supposed to have a run at Washington, D.C.'s Woolly Mammoth Theater. That's now been postponed until, as Ethan Slater says, later. later. And uh, it was, you know, it's eyeing Broadway. We don't have any confirmation on that, but it feels like it's going to come to Broadway at some point. We just don't know when. So this engagement is postponed, it says, to the summer of 2021. So you can plan ahead, I guess. Yeah. It is what it is, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. It's been a lot. It's later. Yeah. Uh, okay, fantastic. <laughs> Let's get to our guests. We also have a bonus surprise later in the episode. But right now, we have a fantastic Tony-nominated guy. We really like him a lot. Caitlin, tell everyone about today's guest. Gladly. You guys, we have Ethan Slater here for our final guest of the week here on Live at Five Home Edition, live on both Facebook and YouTube. 
Ethan Slater was supposed to be in uh, Assassin's at a classic stage company around this time. I'm not sure what the exact dates were, but he is a part of the Classic Conversations Initiative, who's good, and his episode airs on May 21st, which he's going to be talking all about that. You guys probably know him. He earned a Tony nomination for his Broadway debut as SpongeBob SquarePants in the SpongeBob SquarePants musical, which you guys can literally go on Amazon Prime right after this, not right now, but you can go like rent it and watch it right now, tonight, this weekend, whenever. Um, playing SpongeBob also earned him the Drama Desk Award, the Outer Critics Circle Award, and two Broadway.com Audience Choice Awards. So we are so happy to have him here. You guys can leave all of your questions in the comments below and please follow him on social media at Ethan Slater and welcome Ethan and Paul. Hello, <laughs> Thank Mr. You Slater. So Let's just analyze your facial hair, can we? It's good. Oh my goodness. Look, I mean, it's. I would say that it's um, not curated at all because I've just not had the reason to shave. But I, I've been doing a little trimming to keep it, um, you know, uh -huh. camera ready. Yeah, so you're speak. very, you're very Brooklyn now. You're very Brooklyn. Thank you're you. fitting in. You're fitting Thank in. You uh, so how's it going? How's uh, how's you know, on a one to ten, how do you feel today? Every day is um, different. You know, actually today I feel. I feel like an eight. Good. Um, I don't an know. That eight, the one an eight is scale. a lot to ask for. I mean, that's great. It's the best. It's not the same one to 10 scale that maybe I would have applied uh, six months ago, but um, yeah, I'm feeling I'm, it's been a good week. It's been a busy week in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, that's like the personal sort of life stuff. And uh, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be, you know, when people ask me how New York is doing, I my answer is always, well, right now New York is my apartment. So my apartment is a little bit clean, which is nice. Um, right. Right. So yeah, uh, it's been a good uh, weekend. You were, um, you were deep in rehearsals, right? For Assassins? Yeah, right? we were, we were yeah. two weeks in. Okay. Um, yeah. And I love that show so much. I mean, did you know Assassins well before you got cast in it? You know, I knew it well enough I knew it casually I'd heard the album I'd ha heard both albums um and so like I knew it I was sort of familiar with it but I never got to work on it and get sort of that level of intimacy with the show um and I have to say you know I was excited about the show I was excited about the cast and working with John Doyle and the opportunity to like play guitar in a John Doyle musical like was it was a really um terrifying uh prospect but then actually rehearsing it I just fell more and more in love with the show and sort of the nuance of the show and and what it means right now um, in sort of the the political landscape that we live in. Yeah. And I I am now pretty deeply in love with the show. So I'm I'm really hopeful that we'll get to share it with people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the theater um, is very behind it. I mean, like like Caitlin said, yeah. you're do, they're doing a whole bunch of series of conversations with the cast, and that's what's happening on the twenty first, right? People can. Yeah. What is it? Who are you talking to? What is that? Talking with so, John. It's like it's like an interview. Uh, you know, sort of like this from with home. your boss. With your boss. With my boss, Mr. John with Doyle. Home. Ah, man. So such an intimidating. Um, figure in terms of his body of work and like how much right. it influenced me. But not I mean, actually. I watched, like, but not actually. Like, just like the absolute sweetest human. Yeah. Um, and th th those two weeks of rehearsal, I don't know if I can really accurately describe how fulfilling those two weeks were. It was just diving in in this incredibly collaborative way, just like really right off the bat, we were in um, asking a lot of questions, hard questions, and just doing it. And it was it's just so it's so beautiful. So I'm really excited to get to chat with him uh, next week. Do you yeah. um and you have, and you have a great roles roles in the show. You are Balladeer slash Lee Harvey Oswald, which is a great yeah. track, right? That's what the kids say. That's what the actors it's say. It's a great track. Um, uh, yeah, it really is. I mean, it's like a it's it's a. I mean, Lee Harvey Oswald. I mean, you get like this monologue. I mean, the big all the it all leads up to you. The whole show builds to you. Right? It's, I mean, a, it's, like, it's such a great. It's such a great. I mean, it's like the. It's a dream scene. Um, yeah. that we haven't actually gotten to work on yet, but I know that. Oh, it's you didn't. Been, okay. No, we haven't gotten there. You know, we were two weeks in. We were going in order. Yeah. Um, 
But like, do you, yeah, if, you, if you want to work on it now, I know it. I know it if you want to work on it at all. I, okay, I, actually, I wouldn't need to grab my script. I have a lot of notes. <laughs> Texas Book Depository, go. Uh, <laughs> have you, were you the kind of guy that like, uh, do you know a lot about Lee Harvey Oswald? And have you, did you bother like digging into that? There's a lot of pop culture, there's a lot of movies you could watch. There's a lot of TV and books and history, yeah. documentaries. I knew a bit about the Harvey Oswald, just from history classes and um, yeah. in high school and college. I, you know, I have Oswald's Tale, which is this massive novel that I was reading and then, um, you know, sort of the world shut down a little bit and I stopped reading it because it was too painful. Um, mm. But, you know, so I, I'm diving in in that way and trying to sort of, oh, squeaky chair. Um, I'm diving in that way and trying to, you know, immerse myself in the popular culture of Lee Harvey Oswald and what that means. But also like so much of it is just in the text and it, it's so it's a, it's a really cool um, combination of those two things. I think it, yeah. there, there's a lot there to play with. I don't know that it's as necessary as some other things to like glean it from elsewhere. It's just a really well-written book. I have to say though, the thing that's been most impressive about the two weeks that we worked on Assassins was how good uh, every role is and every actor in that room is at like making these roles incredible. There were moments that never stuck out to me in the show as powerful that are mm -hmm. absolutely my favorite moments already. Um, you know, the just Cholgosh who Brandon Ranowitz is playing is like, yeah. first of all, he's just, he's outrageously good, but I didn't realize that I connected with him so much. I didn't realize that Cholgosh was gonna be this character that I, I really deeply mm -hmm. empathize Mm -hmm. But in this production, um, and in this day and age, I really do. So that's been really beautiful. Isn't it crazy? There's, I know there's a lot of SpongeBob uh, fans on here because now oh, I'm here. I'm a big SpongeBob fan. So uh, <laughs> isn't it crazy how um, appropriate that show is now for the world? And isn't it crazy, like what it says about community? And I mean, it was always very politically driven, but it's sort of taken on this whole other crazy level right it's it's um it's a little too prophetic for comfort it yeah. really it like, it like sort of freaked me out when i was thinking through the plot points and i was like oh my goodness like right you know and yeah. anti-science um sort of othering um people who who you know you can try to scapegoat or scape squirrel um and then there's this the message that's like so important at the end of the day is we need to come together mm -hmm. for the good of everyone um, mm -hmm. and we need to really love each other. And uh, yeah, it. I will say though, I think the thing that made me so proud about SpongeBob, not just sort of what we were doing overall, but the way that it was crafted was the story that was told with so much love and, and politically driven in some way. Um, but it's always felt incredibly relevant for reasons that I think are a little unfortunate. Um, it's perpetually prescient yeah. and it's just going more so the, as the world changes, but it's like, it, it, we're finding these little moments. Um, but I will say, I do think it, we, there was a sing along recently and um, Kelvin Milo hosted uh, an Instagram live beforehand. So we all got to talk and then we started the sing along and we got to re sort of rewatch it on Nickelodeon and it really hit me, you know? I know it so well, and watching it now really hit me in a in a surprising way. It, it's such a um, amazing physical. We've talked about this before, a performance, but it was just so cool to watch uh, how you physicalized that character. What is it like for you to watch yourself actually do it? You know what I mean? Because when you're in it, you're in it. But was it an interesting experience to watch? And it was beautifully captured by Nickelodeon. Um, what was was it like for you to watch the show, the uh, taped version? <laughs> It's like, it's super hard. It's super hard because there's little things where I'm like, that's what I look like? So there's a lot of like, oh, I should have done that differently. It's, it's, it's right. sort of impossible to watch it and not be critical. I watched it, the first time I watched it, I truly watched the entire thing just like this. <laughs> um, but I will say the thing that makes me feel better about it, um, hopefully this is applicable to other people trying to watch themselves or something. But wow, 
everyone is so good. Danny's so beautiful and like so sweet and like his performance is incredible. Christina's performance is incredible. Just everyone, I see it and I'm like blown away by everything they're putting into it. And I'm watching me and I'm like, oh my God. But maybe if I can see how amazing they are, yeah, I'm, I'm not as cringy as I feel. Yeah. You know? And so it like, it levels it out. I was worried that you would have that reaction to I was worried I was worried you would have that reaction to it because it's so stylized and uh but you but it's beautiful and it's brilliant for that reason. It's like it's it's all about the overall effect of what you are creating. And I love it. Oh, I think I'm so glad. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm really proud of that you really captured it. I'm really proud of it. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really great that that got to, and I got to see it in a movie theater, which was fun. Uh, yeah. That was, was awesome. Like, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm gonna drop Caitlin in, and let's find yeah. out what the fans are asking. Oh, that is a lot of questions. There are a lot of questions. Okay, the first thing first, I can't find who exactly said this, but Jenny said she wants to know what's it like. You went from doing SpongeBob, which has like every songwriter like helped produce that, and then now you're doing uh, Sondheim music. So, what is that kind of like going back? To, from those two different types of music for you. Sondheim's fancy. That's fancy. And like, you know, there's, a, I always got the question with SpongeBob, what is it like to do a show um, where you're playing a character that's so well known? And the truth is that there's a lot of responsibility. Like you feel, you, you owe it to the fans of the character and whatever. That's how I feel about Sondheim. There's like a lot of responsibility right. to interpret it well. Um, you're not talking about you're not talking about Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald fans. You're talking about Sondheim fans. Sondheim fans, right? Lee right. Harvey Oswald fans are also brutal, but for a different <laughs> and different um, ways. <laughs> uh, it's it, but I will say one of the things that's been really thrilling for me is that um, I I am playing I'm playing guitar with this band of actor musicians who are just the most talented people. Like they're just good. They're just so such brilliant musicians, such amazing actors. And so it's really uh, nerve wracking. I, I love playing music and playing guitar, but I've never done it before in a show, in a John Doyle show. Um, but I'm getting this like new appreciation for the music because I'm playing in most songs and I'm seeing sort of the intricacies of, of the chord changes and the melodies and the, and the time signatures, which are impossible in a new way. So that's been really cool um, and a really amazing learning experience for me so far. It's interesting that you are rehearsing the show now and maybe when you do the show, we might have a different administration. I mean, there's, we might be in a whole different, uh, we'll see, a different cycle. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, okay, so Katie C on YouTube wants to know, what is your favorite musical soundtrack cast recording to listen to? Oh, that's that's a toughie. That's a tough, that's a hard question. I think I wanna say, I'm gonna go with a historical answer. Historically in my life, sure. uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, um, the soundtrack of, of the version. The, so sound, I guess the soundtrack. The movie soundtrack. Right? Yeah. You broke up for a second. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The movie, yeah. the movie soundtrack, that right. 1970s amazing Carl yeah, Anderson. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. That's, that's like been my hands down favorite um, forever. Interesting. So I think that would be it. Cool. I love that. <laughs> um, okay. So Hank, Hank on YouTube wants to know, when did you know that you wanted to be on Broadway? Ooh, good question, Hank. Um, I I don't know. I wanted to be on Broadway from the time I saw the first show that I saw on Broadway. I think it was All Shook Up. Um, oh, so, good one. And Curtis Holbrook. Um, but I remember seeing that and I saw Fiddler on the Roof in the same weekend. Um, but those were like really, those were a really important moments for me where I was like, I really would love to do that. When did I think that I could, that I wanted to do that as my career is, is a harder question, but the, the best answer I can give is when I saw one of my best friends from high school, Noah Robbins, play uh, Eugene in Brighton Beach Memoirs mm. um, on Broadway. Yeah. I was, I was a senior in high school and he had gotten it, you know, we, we grew up in DC 
and he had been going back and forth for these auditions and he booked the role when he was a senior in high school and it was you know months after he graduated and I my mind was blown um Noah is still one of the best actors I've ever met in my life and I just happened to meet him in high school but that was that was a huge moment for me I love that that is amazing okay so a lot of people want to know you know you got to do two weeks of assassins but in those two weeks you got to reunite with wesley taylor from spongebob so a lot of people want to know what that was like <laughs> oh my god okay well okay so speak i was saying how great everyone is in this show wesley is one of those people um it's a really fun thing to meet somebody in one context and know them so like intimately in that context yeah and then transition to another one. I mean, obviously like Wes and I had this f friendship through the show and then through, you know, just we became friends, but like I've never seen him really work on on something else. Um, right. So that was, re that was really great. I will also say that I, I have to say the best part about it is that I was so intimidated by that cast list that being able to walk into a room and be like, I know you and I think beforehand I I knew him and I knew Eddie, and I'm not sure I knew anyone else. Um, although if I'm misremembering that I will feel guilty about that. But um, it was like, it, it's huge to have that moment in a rehearsal room. I hope Steve Pasquale's Pasqua being nice to you. That guy. I mean, no, he's a gem. Oh my goodness. Are you, it, it, I'm like, I, I have to say, this is, this is embarrassing, but I, I think I'm gonna say it. Um, I think the only time I've ever cried since because of somebody's voice, not because of anything else contextually, but just the voice yeah. was when I saw Bridges. I oh was in the God. very last row. I'm tearing up thinking about it. Um, <laughs> and I, like, I remember I was like, I had come in from school. I took the train to come see it before it closed. And I was sitting in the back row and I was watching it. And then all of a sudden he's singing it all fades away, obviously. And I didn't know what was happening to me. I was just sobbing. And that's never happened to me before or since. Um, and now I get to have that amazing scene with him at the end of the show. Did you ever do a play Kelly O'Hara with him? Have you asked him yet to do a duet of you for your Francesca? Not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet, but um, later, not even later. Do that later. later. <laughs> 54 below. Yes. Cool, I think we have time for one more question. Yep. All right, okay, so, all right, Shan wants to know, what do you remember most from your first Broadway performance? Not opening night, but your very first time on a Broadway stage in front of an audience. Um, I will say, okay, so the two things that I remember most are, think the first is that I, I was thinking um, when it, it started, I was like, oh, this is my Broadway debut. This is what counts. I'm on a Broadway stage. Um, I will say opening night felt very different. I, the only thing that I can remember is the moment before I went out on stage, not knowing any of my lines, just being like, I 100%, I've been working on this show for six years. There's no chance I remember any of it. Um, and like crawling out, I, I had this like little sneaky entrance and crawling out and just, it's totally blank from then to the end. Um, but it was like, I don't know, it, it's hard to explain. It's like so exhilarating. Yeah. The one other thing that I do remember, speaking of getting emotional, is um, there's something really, really emotional about an audience responding with sort, sort of a standing ovation. And our show got this big, like everyone stood up at the end of the show when the ensemble, like when our whole ensemble was, um, you know, getting ready for the bows. And I remember being like, "Oh, they get it," um, and and that was really, really yeah. unbelievably touching. Yeah. And was your Tony night two years ago? Right? Was that um, all of two years ago? Yeah. Is that all a blur, or is that like you remember it moment by moment? Do you how 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 much uh, how much are you able to? Soak oh. that? Moment by moment, but there are some really, really great like flashbulb memories from that night. Um, specifically, when I was in the dressing rooms at Radio at Radio City, um, getting ready to go on stage, yeah. and uh, I was dressing next to Norbert Leo Butts, and I was um, and and I walked in, and I and he went, "Oh, hey, Ethan," and I was like, "You've been my favorite actor since I was, you know, <laughs> You've been my absolute favorite actor." Um, we didn't really talk, but it, he's so he's so so kind, and I I was like I was like this is one that you're never gonna forget. 
No, but they are butts in the dressing room. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. well, so if, you. if you're watching, you you made my life there. So thank you. No, but, oh, Mr. Butts watches every day. I guarantee. I guarantee. He usually he asks questions under weird names. One of the ones you answered was him, I think, actually. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ethan Slater, thank you so much for being here. I hope that you have, you know, stay, stay, stay with your loved ones, be healthy, be happy, wear a mask, wash your hands. I trust you're going to do everything well, and we'll see you later. Yes, I'll see, see you later. Oh, I don't know if anybody um, was looking for something to do like after this is over. Logan Jones and I go live and we play music every week, and we're doing it today at like five forty-five on. You Instagram. go live on on what on what platform? On Instagram. On Instagram. Instagram okay. live. We'll just be Got playing it. a couple of songs. It's so very that's what, that's what time? 5.45. Are you going to change your outfit or is this the outfit? This is it? I'm going to change everything. <laughs> no, Are you going to shave? Gonna gonna shave? Gonna shave. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to shave. I'm, really I'm sorry. This, this is all you get. I'm sorry. Um, all right. Thank awesome. You for of course. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon, okay? See you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, we're not, we're not done. We're not done yet. Uh, Caitlin, we have oh, a bonus. Yeah. We have a bonus surprise. So, you know, we have been doing all of this um, Tiger King, the musical, a parody content, right? There's all these amazing songwriters are writing songs for this crazy project. It's just sort of like a fun way to keep everyone busy and creative. And, uh, and amazing performers have been uh, a part of it. And today, we are premiering another music video, and this is a good one. And we have Gerard Canonico here. Hey, buddy. What's up, guys? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. How's everybody doing? We're good. We're good. good. It's Friday. It's Friday. We have a it is of Friday. It yeah, is. You Thanks good. for having me on. You have facial hair going, too, but you, all, you always do, don't you? I Not do nowadays. Nowadays, Not I try. Too. Yeah, I was shaving every day and be more chill, and it was irritating my skin quite a bit. So yeah, yeah. because yeah, how yeah because you were you were you were playing down right for, for oh yeah long. oh yeah <laughs> way down way down I love that I love that your age range is is fantastic <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> so we are going to premiere a video we're going to talk about it after um, anyone who has seen. Um, Tiger King. I'm assuming you have, Gerard. Correct. Yes. You've seen. Did you? Did you binge it when we all did? You binge it when we all did. I sure did. Yeah, pretty immediately. Because you really had to get into character for this. Um, I did. I had to do some deep diving. John, you are John Finlay. Is that that's that's his name? The, mm -hmm. real, the real person. Yes. Uh, he does. He doesn't look like how he looked in Tiger King, but no. or in this video that how you look. No. But um, let's just play the video, and then we'll talk. We'll talk for a little bit after. It's called When I'm With You. This is from Tiger King, the musical, a parody. I was a lover of ladies from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. And if I talked to a female in high school, I was probably trying to get laid. Well, I love talking to them ladies. But when I turned a crisp 19 I was ready and raring to go But then fate went and intervened When I met you, exotic Joe Cause when I'm with you, I'm gay Oh, when I'm with you, I'm gay I'm straight all the rest of the day But when I'm with you, I'm gay Oh, man, am I gay. You say I'm the strong and silent type. Just a little cub who doesn't think. No, I won't be the brawny, violent type. If you fill me with meth and drink. Just don't skimp on that meth. You said I could have anything. So a pink camo gun made me yours. And if you give me enough incredible stuff, I'll call you my king while I'm down on all fours. Cause when I'm with you, I'm gay. In a pretty transaction away. Even though I did the secretary for 
Bruce and for meth I'll be gay You had 200 tigers and 96 bears And 81 lawsuits that ate up your wares You had 20 employees who worked in your zoo And one loving hubby and Travis made too But now that you're gone and they've locked you away and when I'm feeling blue and the skies turn to gray, I look at this gun in a certain old way and I hug it real close. And that's when I say that when I'm with this gun, I'm gay. It represents you in a sort of gay way. I want to stroke it up and down all day. Cause when I'm with this gun, it's like our pink camo sign. And I think about the one who made some of the day <laughs> yeah, you, you are ridiculous i love it <laughs> so there's, fi there's finally a song for guys when i'm with you i'm gay i mean i haven't heard that sentiment really captured in a, a in a musical theater song before so, so this is the yeah so there's, poetic. A, there's a name for this it's really very poetic. Um, there were a few <laughs> options too. They they had an A an A version and a B version. Uh, we chose the safer, a little bit cleaner version. I think. Um, <laughs> so happy we did. But it was. I mean, I've never done anything like this. Obviously, this is such a crazy process that we all sort of have to deal with. So right. I was a little intimidated at first, to be honest. And I was like, oh, I don't know, man, because I watched Kristen Chenowitz and then I watched Wills and 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 everybody had like the backgrounds. They were in the forest <laughs> and stuff. And I'm like, man, I live in Harlem. I don't I don't have that sort of well, but but so you had a, but you had overalls. Overall. I did. I did. I did. That was and important. dental work. And and <laughs> Yeah. So, what 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 was the trick there? What did you use to? Um... Uh, my my girlfriend, thank thankfully, also not only bought me this stuff, but pressured me to use it because I was also like, I don't know, I don't know, maybe they can do it later. It's Ben Nye uh, tooth blackout stuff. It basically smells like mint, and it's like tooth. It's like nail polish for your teeth. So you just brush it on. It's nice. it's miraculous. It looks really. It looks quite good on film. Well, and, very and, feel here. And John Finley in the mo in the TV show, he is Joe Ex one of Joe Exotic's husbands. You know, yes. Thruple. He's in a Thruple, um, and and he basically was into straight dudes. He made straight yeah. dudes gay when when they were with him, they were gay. I guess, yeah. And I don't even, I don't even. I mean, drug addicts. You know, they were desperate. Oh right, and that. <laughs> there was, uh, yeah, and the real John Finley now has beautiful teeth. I mean, yeah. So he looks, yeah, and he looks nothing like himself. He actually looks like someone I knew when I was growing up. So I'm I'm a little tripped out by it, but <laughs> yeah, he looks great. I'm I'm happy for him. And I should have to I should say that song was written by Samsel Anderson, who yes. are a new uh, female songwriting team, right? And they write that Central Park show on Apple they TV did. and and they have that new musical Between the Lines which mm -hmm. we've been talking about a lot on the site which is coming next year um, and Dave Reynolds also wrote some lyrics and so this is the latest in this crazy uh, fun quarantine project how has your how have you been in general before we go are you are you good yeah I've been all right man hanging in there creating my own stuff trying to stay uh, sane and healthy and safe staying home all that stuff yeah, yeah. awesome glad to hear it Thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope everybody, for me. Of course. And that the video is also on YouTube. It's on our YouTube channel now. It just went up. Awesome. So uh, ridiculous yeah, for, and awesome. <laughs> it was very I love a creative project. I love a, you know, I love seeing what you what people come up with when they just have like a camera and a need and a goal to get something done and a time <laughs> limit and hundred yeah, percent. And <laughs> some good teeth teeth stuff. I'm glad it tasted good at least. It did, yeah. yeah very, very I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear it. Okay, everybody have a fantastic weekend. And Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in for another fun weekend, uh, Lab 5 Home Edition. You guys can follow along wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag Lab 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Have a great weekend. Stay inside, wear a mask, don't touch anybody, and be sure to tune in on Monday when we talk to Tony winner Lena Hall all about her brand new TV show, 